What's up guys, Gims here, and welcome back to ProSound22 for episode number 54 of the Garmin Shop Career Mode, the final episode of season 5 with the World Championships and the Lombardia and the transfers. Um, probably a bit of a shorter episode compared to the previous ones, uh, but we will head back into the next season with better races, better results, better Grand Tours, or at least so I hope. The aim is clear, it is to get back the title we have lost last season to Filippo Ganna. And also there is a second objective. We've lost the European Championships, we've lost the Swiss Championships. Let's make sure that at least one of the two Stefans have a distinctive jerseys for next season. Also, starting next year, we'll have better uh, parkour, at least different parkours for the World Champs parkour that are most likely fantasy parkours. I found a few that I enjoy. Um, I haven't changed these years for a simple reason. Uh, I made the lineups before thinking about changing the parkours and uh, I couldn't find a like flat parkour that was somewhat interesting and I'm pretty sure the road race is flat this year. It's Valkenburg, so it's flat-ish. Um, so yeah, that's why I haven't gone for, uh, for an interesting variant this year. But coming up right in the next season should be some parkours you've never seen uh, either on this save, maybe on your saves, or on anyone's saves. That's, that's a fact. I haven't mentioned it, but Bessega is not having the greatest of dates, minus two for the uh, Swiss rider. We'll see if he can uh, challenge Johan Price Peterson in Borgo Tosignano. Uh, P3 maybe? Fucking hell, P13. Easy top three. If I'm not... 16th! And across the line for Bessega, we'll go 99 just for the, for, for the fun of it. Or like, what? Eight? Yep. Yeah. 8th place for Besega, 45 seconds behind Paris Peterson for Timo Bobanki. I cannot lose something else to, to Timo Bobanki. Like, if if they, they're not the one winning, it's Tudor. It's either one of, or, or the other now. I can't have this kind of hegemony taking place in this eight. Hopefully and thankfully for us, the days are brighter. For Stefan Kung, it is probably a plus 3, plus 4 for the Swiss Rada and with 85 time trial and 84 flat, we are definitely looking good, or at least looking better than Besega to take the rainbow jersey. We'll have Woven Art and people Ghana right behind us. Ahead of us is Ethan Eta. Okay, Kaspar Asganezer, I think he's done quite well in the European Championships. He may have won them, actually. Um, so, everything still yet to play for. Still leading in Imola, and it's been the case for a very long time, is still Johan Bryce Peterson. Stefan is 15 seconds down on Price Peterson at the first intermediate. Um, take a look at Van Aert. Van Aert is first, Jesus Christ. Van Aert is first. I'm already 20 seconds behind Wade Van Aert. Okay. Ghana. Ghana one second behind the Belgian rider. Final kilometer for Stefan Kung. Uh, Ethan Nater has taken P5. He was right ahead of us. Kung is going to sprint across the line. Two seconds behind Price Peterson. We came back by 13 seconds. But sadly, it just wasn't enough. We'll have a Dane on the podium. The question is, which position? It won't be first as Roy Van Aert takes that off the shoulders of Timo Bobanke. People Ghana for, I believe, Orbea, the, formerly, the team known formerly as Movistar, crosses the line. Same second as Roy Van Aert. It could swap, it could try, it didn't, it didn't. Whether or not is the new time trial world champion ahead of people Ghana, Johan Price Peterson. Stefan Kung comes on P4, disappointing year for several on the time trial aspect. Um, we've got a few plus fives. Schmidt, Kung and Suiter, plus one for Besega, the only rider that isn't in my team as a minus one. Uh, it leaves you to think that maybe, just maybe, my training is somewhat optimal compared to the training done at Tudor Cycling. But I would not would uh, want to criticize, obviously, the uh, team led by Benjamin Nazan, a team that won their first European title, thanks to me. Again, still not over this European Championship disaster. Um, as I said today, we've got Valkenburg. I've said it's for the sprinters. I may have lied a bit considering there is, well, the cowbag right before the uh, finish line. But, again, you never really know. Kung, Suter, all of them lot could do anything. Wait, Suter progressed in time trial, didn't he? I don't know, but he looks quite good. 
I must say this hasn't been the greatest of world championships to witness a three-man breakaway with Patrick Gampa, Bob Jungels and, uh, well, not Lotto Kopecky, uh, Martin Kopecky probably. Two-minute lead gap, I think at best, was four minutes. Uh, we've had one water that got completely dropped. That is Novikovsky for Ukraine. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, nothing's happening. We've entered the Cowberg. I would have expected some of the GC leaders, or at least the um, the contenders for a win, but not through sprint to attack. They have not. So I'm a bit on defense so far. It's yeah, it's just not great. At least one rider is trying to make the race interesting. On his own up front is Tadej Pogacar. He's attacked in the Cowberg. And he's gone completely mental. He's solo. Um, yeah, I mean, if he can do it on the Gran Camino, or oh no, what is it called? The Yare, uh, Yaren Paraiso Interior. Surely he can do it on the World Championships. Spoiler alert, uh, he didn't. He didn't. He, he got caught up by, uh, by the peloton led by Ghana and Italy. Who is it? Oh, crash. Big crash. Big crash. Uh, Pustelberg, Groschana. Oh, that's a shame for Austria. Uh, I think I saw Rui Oliveira, uh, Tobias Salon Johansson. Yeah, that's an L. That's an L for Austria, losing uh, Gampa as well. Or just maybe, maybe getting back Gampa. Uh, he was in the breakaway. He, well, now he's not. But yeah, big L. Big L for, uh, for Österreich. Struggling to get at the front of the peloton here because of uh, a few riders attacking. That is the case for Ide Schelling. That is the case for Harry Sweeney, who are actually trying to chase down um, the, uh, the Dutch rider. Here she's going to try and propel our train on the left side of the road. We're going to get blocked just like we've done throughout the entire year. I mean... Look, it didn't work out with the sprint trains. It's not going to work out even if it's not technically a sprint, although it seems like it may be one. But Mark Hirschi is in the first positions of this peloton. Stefan Kung will take the relay. Mark Hirschi is going to slap himself to the right side of the road. Kung, Schmidt, Suter, Pesega is there more as a decoy rather than an actual opportunity. But you never know. Things could change very quickly. It's 99 rhythm in the Cowberg for Stefan Kung, Schmidt and Suter for now. No one has overtaken us. There goes Stefan Kung. There goes Mauro Schmidt. Besega has exploded. Joel Suter goes now. Can someone come back? No. Nobody can. Joel Suter and Mauro Schmidt for the one two for Switzerland today. Heading into Lombardia for what is the final monument of the season, we have obviously decided to bring Joel Suter. Does he have a chance at winning Lombardia? The answer is very simple and straightforward. No. Does he look good losing? Yes. Uh, that should be my Tinder by the way. Wow. Um, <laughs> but we've got McDonald's, Menke, Sjogens and Martinez, Suter, Schmidt and Ken Wehrmerke for the final monument of the race or of the season which is also for me the final world tour race of the season. I know there's the core of Guanji, blah, 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 blah. No one cares about the great tour of Guanji, even the organizers, because the race, I'm pretty sure, hasn't taken place in four years. Moving on, uh, we'll try and do things with Mauro Schmidt and Wehrmerke. Um Maybe if um, Matteo Jorgensen, if he fancies a chance. Uh, I would have said McNulty, but I, I, I would need to take a, a look at his season, because I think Brandon's season may be worst or well, top five worst seasons of all time and he's not fifth crash crash at the back of the peloton um sobrero was involved but also schmidt and Wehrmarker and lenny martinez thank you thank you for making the end of my season as bearable as my grand tour campaign 63 kilometers remaining we've started the madonna del Gisalo. uh we've got jorgensen schmidt and Wehrmarker at the front of the group lenny martinez never came back Following his crash, uh, his his flats. I mean, I think someone said in my comments that I should not have renewed his contract because he's not a grand tour leader, and I absolutely see what they mean by that. Um, the lack of flat time trial. Uh, he's just a climber. That is great if I want to win the move on to the Nivelle Challenge, or I'm pretty sure he's won the Tour of Slovakia and the, the whilst I was simulating. Those are races he can win. Grand tours. I'm doubting it. I wish he can prove me wrong in the next season, though. We have an interesting race situation here. Uh, 40k to go. We've crossed the uh, Madonna. 
We're in the peloton, uh, a group of 106 riders with a group of 11 up front, and that group of 11 is just favourites that have attacked. Um, Pogacar, Cosnefroy, Miguel Eduardo Flores for some odd reason. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna guess they bridged, um, the remainder of the, of the breakaway. Studa Held, the, uh, time troll champion for Switzerland, who defeated me in one of my, wow, Van der Van, Mathieu, Mathieu crashed. Mathieu Van der Poel has crashed with Felix Gall and Diego Ulissi. Hopefully for him, it's not too big a crash, and it is, a, it is an early, early holiday for Mathieu Van der Poel. 26k to go. Schmidt, Wehrmark at the front of the group. No more breakaways, no more Mathieu Van der Poel. Joe Twitter is trying to get water to the rest of the team, but he's struggling and his energy is bleak. I may have to drop Schmidt and, uh, and Jorgensen just for the time being. There we go, perfect. I was able to get water, that's all I needed in uh, San Fermo de la Battaglia for the first time here on this climb. Uh, we'll come back uh, in about 15-ish. Kilometers, maybe actually 20 kilometers to, um, San Fermo. Some attacks up front with Dylan Tunes. Wehrmark, uh, not in an ideal position, I must say. But together with Mauro Schmidt, the former world champion. Uh, I think I had done well last season with, uh, with Mauro Schmidt here. Yeah. I can't remember which position, but I'm pretty sure I hadn't, I hadn't done too badly. We'll see if we can reiterate said performance with the Swiss man. And this is where Lombardia maybe won Chiviglio. We're not in the best of position, but we're not too far down, and we're right next to uh, Juan Ayuso. We've got uh, some some good riders next to us, Richard Carabas, mainly, Ida Schelling. I'm pretty sure good you had attacked. Uh, we've got a solo rider, Aurélien Parépentre, on his own, and he's done quite well here. It's a good attack by, uh, by Aurélien Parépentre, I must say, followed by, uh, by Botalume, Jao Almeida. Igor Arrieta has attacked with Jack Haig, David Godu trying to follow, Quinn Simmons is there, Mauro Schmidt leading the peloton group, already one minute behind Aurélien Parépentre. The Frenchman may be on his way to win what could be his first monument. I'm pretty sure he is going to win said monument. Uh, he still leads Jao Almeida, Mauro Schmidt unable to drop the uh, riders in the peloton, 9 kilometers to go. 120 is the deficit already. That's, that is absolutely massive. That is absolutely massive. Wehrmark uh, has gone and finished his job. We'll try and take the look of Tiberi here because I don't want to get dropped with Mauro Schmidt. Let's, uh, let's go effort. Let's attack actually. Let's, let's follow Quinn Simmons in, uh, San Fermo de la Battaglia. Try to catch, uh, Johannesen and, uh, Igor Arrieta. Quinn Simmons has collapsed. Sadia didn't follow the right wheel up front. Parépentre still kicking about 15 seconds for the leader of Citroën. I think Jao Almeida will crack. I don't think Jao Almeida is going to be able to, to come back on, um, on the French radar. The group behind for sure will not manage to come back. Led by uh, Marco Brenner, Johansson and Jack Haig. Mauro Schmidt is right there for the taking. There's a P3 to try and, uh, and grab here for the Swiss radar. Come on, son. Come on, Mauro. Come on, Mauro. Go get P3. He's got no energy. He's got literally nothing. He's holding onto a thread. Up front, 1.6 kilometers. And Aurélien Parépentre is going to claim what is by far the biggest win of his career. 1.4k to go. I can't launch this early because I will literally collapse. Parépentre, Almeida, Tobias Haaland, Johansson for P3. Go to Jack Hague, Brenner, Tiberia. Probably should have launched when they did. It's P8 for Mauro Schmidt. He was good today, sadly. Not better. Only one win in the episode, but by far the most important one. The season over, let's take a quick look at the rankings, the results, and the transfers that the AI has done. Uh, Spotify Quick Step is by far the best team heading into 2026. Let's take a look at actually at the um, actual rankings. There we go. Come and chop with the job. Come on, we finally won something. Um, wait, Citroen got relegated? Nah, yeah, all, all up. Who got relegated? Wait, Eolo went up, Kubeka went up, Citroën and Nike Alphabet got relegated. That's peak. Okay, uh, any surprises? BNB Hotel, back to Continental Pro. It's a, it's a miracle, they're still alive. Uh, who's going down? Cofedis to Continental. Fucking hell. Aye. Uh, 67 wins this year, we'll compare that to our previous results. When it comes to the individual rankings, it is Tadej Pogacar taking the win ahead of Ida Kelling and Juan Ayuso. Mark Cavendish is our best rider in P4, do you know how mental that is? That's, that's staggering. 
Uh, Jorgensen P5, Kung Ming is in the top 10, Mauro Schmidt losing his place at the very uh, end, no? Oh no, actually it was P13 at the start of the month, um, so nothing on that changed. Biggest amount of wins is Paul Penouet, 26 wins. Was he already running for Nike XL after that? Or did he just join them? Career. No, he was riding for um for Saint Michel Aubert. Twenty six dubs. Well done, well done. Uh Mark Evanish, P five. Ten wins in your P five this year. It's been a difficult year. Taking a look then at the highlights with Adam Yates winning the Oceanian Tour. Oh the world has just disappeared. Fair enough. Good. Uh, so Adam Yates won the Oceanian Tour, um which was a tour I had added. Minkis has won the Giro, Tade Pogacar won the Tour de France and the Vuelta was won by Maxim Van Rils, I think. Um, horrendous Tour de F uh, Grand Tour campaign for me, <laughs> if we're honest. <laughs> we're shit. Uh, when it comes to the rest of the Tour, we've won the Dauphiné with Lenny, the Benelux with Kung, uh, Vermarke won the Tour of the Fjords, fuck me, I forgot about that, but that did definitely exist. Uh, one Tour here has disappeared, that is obviously the Santos Tour down under because it didn't exist anymore. Um, but otherwise, Tade has done quite well winning a few here and there. When it comes to the World Champs, uh, the only one that matters is me winning the road race with Suter. That championships, we haven't won any of them, so let's not dwell on that. San Remo has been won by Kevin Nish with Van Parbe. Uh So that's two out of five monuments for us. That's, I'd say, quite alright, although I could have done better and I should have done better. Taking a look then at the transfers, uh, I won't go through uh, team by team, I'll just take a look at uh, the teams individually and if there's a massive transfer, I'll tell you. Well, here's one. And that's also why they've managed to enter World Tour. Jonas Vingegaard has joined Eolo Cometa alongside Harry Sweeney, Antonio Tiberi, Madis Michels and Tim Obrist. Who are you and why aren't you in my dev team? Um, they've lost Animoscon. Uh, 81 cobbles for the Animoscon. Also, we'll take a look as well at the progression of some riders. But Vingegaard now leads Eolo Cometa. Schachmann has joined JBL, uh, they've used the money that they got from losing Veren Schultz. They've lost their two sprinters with Marin van Berg, actually th three sprinters with uh, Chris Lawless as well. And you've replaced him with no one. Oh, here's a transfer. Tade Pogacar has signed with Liquigas to replace Ide Schelling, who has gone to Spotify Quick Step. Uh, Miguel Juan Lopez has gone to JBL. I hadn't even seen that, and I was in the previous team. Wow, okay. And David Baich as well. Pogacar to Liquigas. Interesting. Pipo Gala has left the good old Orbea Ciclismo. He's gone to Voxy by Volopen, which is by far. Uh, or which is, sorry, the formerly known uh, Ineo, so back home for Ghana. And Mathieu Van Eppel joins Movistar. Interesting, he's in for a 10-year spell, just like Valverde was. Massive moves as well, with Peugeot Red Bull losing uh, Mikel Landa and your signing Vlasov and Rona Kosnefra to replace him and investing in some youth, such as Mathis Lebert and Francesco Monnier. Quite nice. And they're the ones doing bigs. They've lost Benoît Cosnefroy, they've lost Tiberi, Bauhaus, Hosevar, and Steimler, but they're getting Ida Schelling, they're getting Van Barle, Vervlos, and Jan Ert. It's, it's good. It's quite good, and that's sadly Spotify Quick Step. It's always them. Big signing for, um, Tudor VMC Cycling, getting Mats Pedersen. Quite cool. Not losing anyone massive except Tomas Barta. Good signing for, uh, for Benji Nazan. Oh, and Peter Sagan has lost, has left Vakosola. I forgot he was still there. He's gone to Bengal. Oh, that's just sad. I forgot there was many teams with V and W. I thought Vakosola would be the last, but they're not. Uh, Voxy Bavolven getting Ghana, Arietta, Aleotti, Luke Plapp, James Price. Who are you? You're good. That's what you are. Wow. And they, they've lost Van Barle, Adam Yates, Hugh Carthy, Bilbao Uran, uh, James Shaw, who's gone to Thailand. Not, not the, the country, but like the, the team of Thailand. A uh, bit of a, of a, of a youth increase in Voxy by Vodafone. Williams, they've signed Roglic, get in. William S. Martini, obviously our favorite team, or the favorite team of your favorite team. Got, they've, they've got a climber. Uh, I mean, well done. You're still clapped, but well done. Also, Roglic is now 36. Invest in someone younger, mate. Come on. And finally, Zwift. You've lost Tade, you've lost Van Der Poel, you've lost Ron Dennis, Sam Oman, and Jan Ert, and you've signed Jenny Moscon and Campenarts. Ouch. I was looking at the transfer window of um, Continental Pro and Continental teams. I'm convinced that UEFA has just gone for vibes. They've signed six riders, a Japanese one, a Cambodian one, Norwegian, Cameroon, Serbia, and Slovenia. 
and they've just lost seven French riders is good. <laughs> just, just, just good. It's fun. We're having fun over there in the and Safe. Also, I figure that some of you may want to see uh, the transfers out of my team. Six riders have found the club. Alex Vogel, who's gone to Ferrey CCN. Zhukovsky, who's followed him to China, I think, and has gone to China Glory. Nicolas Rivard, who's gone to Prometec under 23. I don't want to be that guy, but he's 24. James Pickard has gone to Yoelo test team, so we'll see him definitely on next year's Canadian Championships. And sadly for Carson Murphy and Nan Kristen, they were unable to find a team. Alright, quick look at the stats. Uh, it's still Ayuso and Lenny, the best climbers in the game with 83. Well done. At least one of them knows how to use it on Grand Tour. Alaphilippe still by far the leader in Hales with 83 as well. Um, trying to see if there's not like any regens that I'm seeing. Alex Godin here, sir. Well done. Oh, wow. Four stats for Alex Godin, if I'm honest. Four stats. Uh, time trial, it is Ghana clear. Joshua Tarling is there, well done, 21 years old, 21, can you do something for me? Uh, I don't know, try to defeat me in the next World Champs, Joshua. Cobbles, we've got three at 82 with Sheffield, Van der Poel and Van Aert get in. Uh, we've got two Vans and Sheffield. Thibonis is there, uh, I think entering water with Sports Approximus this year as well, well done to him. When it comes to sprints, we've got a domination from Benelux with Olaf Koy and Fabio Jacobsen, but also Sam Bennett being here. Uh, Mohamed Mahmoud is 11 kicking with Kubeka. So, and Varen Trold, our new signing, with 80. And I'm pretty sure if we go further down, like if we keep going down and like still still down, and like, we carry on going down, we'll see Talifara, <laughs> who's as good as a Thai sprinter from Grand Thornton. Nice one, Tyler. Overall, it is our best season when it comes to uh, the amount of victories. 78 here, according to this, when we had, I think, a 7, 67, I think, in the um, other rankings. Maybe this takes, as well, some of the wins from the riders that had left the team uh, and, and so on. Um, but, yeah. Not the greatest of year, even though the stats show otherwise. But we did win the Giro d'Italia. We, we were shit on the Vuelta, shit on the Tour de France. But it's not that bad a season for Garmin Sharp. That, nevertheless, is going to wrap up season four of the Garmin Sharp career mode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this year's. I'll see if I change the kit for next season. Actually, do let me know if you want me to change the kit for next season, because if I were to, technically, you, I think, all figured out what would be the next team. Uh, and that would be, I believe, the first year of EF. Or well, would it be EF powered by Cannondale or something like that? Or maybe it would just be Cannondale. But I think it would be EF powered by Cannondale or something like that. I feel, I'm, I'm not sure. But if you want me to to keep with Garmin Shop, just let me know. And I'll see you very, very soon for the next episodes and the next season of this save. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below if you're new. Do subscribe and I'll see you very soon. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. Yeah. Pass me the funk. Get your funk on, girl. Don't you ever let it go. We're getting drunk in here, and what comes next?